All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here. And as I discussed this on uh, Discord, um, basically, I have this idea after trying out the demo that it might be very well fitted to uh, be a base for the platform as a service thing where you can easily deploy a demo based scripts, right? So the gist is I have um, I've built a tool called Exoframe. Uh, probably many of you have seen it because I've covered it in, in the videos and stuff. And the idea is that, you know, it's a self-hosted deployment tool that basically handles everything for you, like, you know, the rolling updates, the deployments, the tokens, the secrets, whatever you want, right? But this one is based on Docker. And while it works, it's it was relatively easy to build. It was built essentially for Node.js. I built it for myself because deploying Node.js apps can be a bit of a pain in the ass, right? Especially since you have to do like the uh, package JSON management, the, the dependency management and all of that stuff. It is become It becomes basically quite complex. And even if you want to do something as simple as an add a dynamic route to the live server or something, it's still a pain in the ass, right? Now, the thing is that Deno kind of solves it. So in the last video where I showed off the Deno, basically, uh, you know, if we take the simple example, whenever you import something, it will fetch that automatically from the URL that is given, right? Which means that you no longer have to fiddle around with package JSON, you no longer have to resolve dependencies manually, and the Deno will actually handle all of that, which means that deploying Deno apps is literally as simple as running Deno uh, app URL or whatever the script, right? Which can be also remote script, which is also very handy in here. Hey, Kevin, welcome to the stream. Right, so my idea is that we can actually take Deno and make a platform as a service, right? That would allow us to deploy any script by just running one simple command. And to do that, I basically first I have to actually figure out what kind of API does Deno exposes right now, because I don't want to run like the stupidest way to do that is obviously would be to just run Deno, uh, what was it, Deno bundle, right? And then run Deno execute this following script within Docker, for example, the same way the Exoframe does it now, but then we don't really need a platform as a service. But that adds an additional overhead, right? So because we run Deno every time, I mean, we could we could actually, uh, I would be uh, interested to see. So let's go ahead and create the server TS. I'm interested to see what the overhead of the Deno right now is. So if we go ahead and run, uh, come on, where's my thing? So Deno and uh, why am I copying that? I don't know. Um, server TS. So if we do that, so it's going to pull the server. So as you can see, it resolves the dependencies automatically. This is kind of the uh, important thing. Allow net, right, I forgot about flags. Okay, and now the question is, how much memory does it take? My, uh, okay, you know what, it's probably would be easier to do it like, um, yeah, let me just increase the font. Um, grab deno. Do we got that? Um, okay. What is the formatting here? We got minus A, no, minus L. And uh, you know what, do I have htop installed? Yes, I do, there we go, that looks a lot nicer. Uh, probably a good idea to, well, you know what, it's fine. Uh, where is the no, no, uh, no, that's environments, that's not what I want. Um, okay, where's my deno thing? Yes, code server. Um, F3 search, deno. Uh, okay, uh, why is it, what, no. Um, that doesn't look, this is nodes. No, this is definitely not what we want. Where's my demo? Oh, there we go, there it is. So as you can see here, basically it does pin up quite a few processes and um, I guess this counts by the CPU number. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12. I wonder why 12? Okay, that's whatever, we're gonna try to figure it out. But basically the thing is that this uh, this takes up RAM, this takes up CPU resources, and if you deploy multiple of those, it's gonna eat your resources pretty fast, right? So the, the idea is to uh, run one Deno process, but then deploy um, whatever the user pushes in separate isolates. So because you know the it uses V8, which means it has the concept of isolates. And the cool thing here is I tried to do the same thing for Node.js, but um, the Problem there was that when you run something in isolate, it's a completely new fresh environment. That is a hell of a pain in ass to manage because you have to basically bootstrap the whole environment yourself, right? And um, 
that includes the package JSON, the module resolution and stuff like this, which was, well, basically estimating the work, it would be like, you know, half a year rewriting the whole damn thing or figuring out how it works within Node to just allow to do that within Isolate. Now with Deno, it's um, actually not the case because Deno uses Isolates as the core for all of that. And I looked at the, the entry point they have basically, so they have this librs over here, so it's written in Rust, uh, as already discussed, and it has this, uh, what was it, run uh, REPL or something, run script, uh, eval, this was eval, this was bundle, there we go, so we got the run REPL, which basically does, so it creates a worker with specific flags and then executes the bootstrap main runtime, and then you basically got a prepared worker that you can do whatever the hell you want within, right? So we, yeah, run script, there we go, this is what we want. So this is essentially what we wanna do, but for every script that user submits, right? So whenever the app comes from the user side, we wanna create a new worker within already existing Deno, which would mean that there's a lot less overhead for running um, additional apps. Of course, there's like limitations, obviously, and a bunch of other things to consider, but this is kind of my gist, my, my idea about it, right? <coughs> Apologies. So now the thing is that I know that Deno exposes some additional APIs, like for example, the workers, because it's a web server based uh, thing. Uh, sorry, the browser compatible thing, right? So I'm kind of curious if we could pull it off by just running workers and if the worker environment is the same as the core Deno one. So we're going to try that first. And then if not, we're probably going to dive into the Deno uh, like Rust side or itself, maybe fork it, clone it and try to modify it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see how that develops because I, I have zero experience. I mean, okay, not zero maybe, but very little experience with Rust. So that's gonna, it's going to be one hell of a journey. Anyway, let's try, let's try doing that uh, with a worker first, right? So I'm going to create main TS here. We are going to start a server. So I'm just going to start a server that is uh, going to be a local host. Uh, 8, I mean, let's let's go for 8080 because why not? And uh, we're going to, so I, I guess I'm going to take, you know what? I'm going to take our old uh, example because we're going to basically handle, we're going to have a specific route that would trigger the deployment, like dynamic deployment, which is going to be faked for this moment. Uh, it's going to handle it on base on whatever we call the specific route. So I'm just going to take the server that we used uh, last time, right? Because it was, I think it was good enough. We're just going to reuse that. So we got this, we got, okay, so we got rejson. We don't need rejson in this case. So in this case, this is going to be uh, hello world. Yeah, that's fine. Hello, let's call it hello pass, right? And then uh, we're gonna have a deploy method. And uh, in this case, I'm just gonna create a new deploy TS over here, export, um, okay, let's say deploy. So we're gonna have this handle deploy function that is gonna mimic our response. I'm just gonna grab all of that, right? And um, just gonna export that. And then we're gonna say, okay, import from deploy, right? And we're gonna import handle deploy. And all I have to do here is just say, hey, handle deploy, there we go. Okay, so this is basically what we wanna have. Uh, we don't care about the rejson, oh, whoops, that is too much. That is, because it's not used anymore, right? So we're gonna have that and um, let me kill that. Let me just uh, see. Hello deploy. So just just to test that it actually works and compiles. So Deno main TS, uh, right. Cannot resolve module deploy from what are you not happy about? You want the ending probably, right? Yeah, there we go. So it's probably gonna fail because it wants allow net flag, okay. Yeah, another cool thing about the basing platform as a service on Deno is the fact that uh, with Node.js you never know what kind of things the script is going to do if you run third party script or if you are like, you know, allow your core workers or friends or whoever access your server. With Deno, you can literally restrict that by setting those flags, right? Which I think is pretty damn cool. Uh, what was it? Eight, I think it was 8,000, right? 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then if we trigger deploy, it's gonna run hello deploy. Okay, perfect. Cool, so we got that working. Uh, now what we need to try is, so my first question is if I dynamically import this server and execute it, will that actually work? Because I'm not sure. So I know that Deno has the dynamic deploy, right? Uh, so dynamic import. And I'm kind of curious if, if that would start off uh, the second server. So we got it on 8,000. Let's switch this to 8080 just, or I guess 3,000 would be nicer just so that it's completely different, right? So hello, um, spawn, let's call it spawn world. Let's, it's gonna be very silly. Okay, so we do import and we're gonna do server.ts. And then we're going to say results. And I'm just going to console log results, right? So let's just, let's just actually see what happens if we do that. Uh, we obviously have to restart this. Will it? So does it statically compile it anyway? No, it doesn't. Okay, so it doesn't compile it statically. And here's the question. Will it actually load it? So it does respond, but okay, it needs allow read flag because it wants to access files. That makes sense. Let's do that. Okay, and it doesn't fail and it seems like it does start it. Is it, wait, is it that easy really? Okay, so it literally started the server, right? Now, okay, so the question, we, <laughs> on one hand, this is kind of awesome that you can just literally import any random script and Deno will actually handle it for you. The, um, here's the, can you, okay, I'm curious, so, First of all, if we rename that to uh, not a server, right? And then we start it. So basically right now this file doesn't exist, right? So if we, uh, if I execute it, this is gonna, okay, this is not gonna work obviously. If I execute this, we're gonna get a crash, I think. Right, there we go, okay, cool. So then I rename it back to the server. Um, here's the question, so that's, at what point does Deno compile that? Is it because I have it cached already? So yes, we did that, we started this, and now the problem here is that while it starts it, while it does compile it because it's a TypeScript, right? So it actually happens all in the background, we don't even have to do anything. The problem is we have zero control over what the script does. Um, let me think for a second. So. Obviously this is gonna spawn additional uh, isolate for it, I guess, right? But, or maybe even not, maybe it's the same thread, same isolate, which is not what we want. But the fact that it works is actually kind of awesome. Okay, uh, anyway, so the problem here right now that, okay, it does spawn the second server, but we have no control over it. We don't know how exactly, so it's probably in the same space as this isolate. We can actually try to, um, figure it out. So let's say global this uh, test equals hello from parent, right? So theoretically, if they are running in the same uh, isolate, we should be able to share the global this, right? And if I do that. So if I restart the whole thing, uh, it should, da -da -da, let me go there. So we run deploy. Yep, so it is the same isolate with the same environment, right? So which is, I mean, it's fine, but it's suboptimal. What we want is a complete separation uh, with parent controlling our child services, right? So this is not gonna fly, even though, it, like I'm amazed that it works this easy when you can just import a script and it literally just runs, which is uh, kind of kind of awesome. But anyway, let me think for a second. So what do we wanna do? We wanna try, I guess, a web worker. Hey, Xstorm, welcome to the stream. All right, so let's give it a shot with a worker. Worker, um, so JS, worker, blah, blah, blah. Let me see, MDN, there we go. Okay, so we want to start a worker from our server. T Here's the question as well, will it work? Will it work with a TypeScript, right? Because um, theoretically, so, okay, first of all, let's keep the global variable just to see if, if there's any effect, right? And we got that, post message. Okay, obviously we don't care about post message. So we could uh, terminate it, right, after some time. This is basically our uh, 
one method of control, let's put it this way. Let's set it to like, I don't know, five seconds or something. Okay, my worker, it doesn't have terminate. Interesting. Uh, post message, it doesn't have terminate. I thought they were browser compatible. I guess not completely, but anyway, let's try that. So run that, uh, worker, okay, so you don't know that at all. All right, uh, interesting. Right, so while workers, I guess, will work, let's check this out. So we deploy this thing, right? It starts the worker. No, it doesn't. Not implemented yet. Only module type workers are supported. Okay, I'm guessing the deno workers are not quite the same as a web workers. Deno worker, let's see. Uh, deno land, manual. Do they have it in manual or not? Uh, deno land, come on. So, what is happening with my internet? Why are you so freaking slow? There we go. Okay. Uh, worker. Uh, web workers. Debugging LLDB. Okay. No, there is no docs about that right now. So, I guess we have to dive into the. Uh, we could look at the, um, the, the, the standard. Do you have a worker somewhere here? Doesn't really see. Okay, so I guess we have to go into the source code and see what do we have here about worker. So this is CLI web worker, web worker host. Okay, we got the tests for workers. That's perfect. That's usually a really good place to start. Okay, name module, type module, name JS worker, test worker. Okay, mm, so where is subdeer? Where's my test worker JS? We could, okay, let's have a TypeScript one uh, for the sake of it. All right, if self worker, okay, I guess this is basically just unless you are like a proper web worker, it won't actually execute anything. So you cannot import anything and you cannot run any scripts there, right? Which is a bit of a pain in the ass. The fact that it supports TypeScript out of the box, even for workers is kind of awesome, but that is suboptimal. Okay, um, let's see what other tests they have. Like I would wanna, basically I would wanna have access to this worker creation, like low level uh, Rust workers, right? Not the web workers that they have, but I'm not sure if that's actually something that is done or even planned. Worker deno, there we go. Worker blob, okay. So this one is type module uh, worker deno ns. All right, so let's have a look. What does, man, I wish I could click this on in, in inside of GitHub. 039 worker deno ns. Okay, so what is, as ns, what does this do? Uh, window deno worker, maybe ns. Okay. Right. No NS has an S. Okay, so this is just basically access to the Deno namespace, which is, I mean, great if you have that, but this is not something we care about, right? Da -da -da, worker blob, din import, so this dynamic imports, JSX tests, more JSON, VASM. Right, so it doesn't seem like we can actually do this through JavaScript, which means we would probably need to dive into the um, into the Rust, right? Well, I, I was hoping there would be an easy way of doing that with just uh, JavaScript or TypeScript, but looks like this is not the case. Which means we need to, I guess, do we need to fork the, or I guess clone the, uh, sorry, the deno itself. Because what we want is this run script thing, right? And we want to modify it so that this bit is exposed as a separate function that can be accessed from JavaScript because I basically don't want to write the whole logic in Rust. I actually want this to be a small addition on top of Deno itself. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess let's try to do that. Um, so let's start by uh, cloning the Deno. Okay, let me just, you know what, I'm just gonna keep this. Yeah, so we go. Just Tap this, uh, go to the deno. Now we're gonna clone this and we're gonna see how all of that develops. I am not 
like I have a feeling that we're we're not gonna get too far today. I'm kind of curious as to you know how 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 far can we take this in you know hour hour and a half stream. But uh, yeah, the fact that you know I was hoping there would be some way to do that from within uh, JavaScript land without actually diving into the Rust, but uh, seems like it is not the case. Right, so we got cargo. Um, I need some reminder as to how the Rust cargo. Da -da -da. So we need what? We need to do cargo builds, cargo install or whatever. No, we don't need cargo new. We need cargo. Yeah, I guess let's run cargo. You know what? I need to disable the antivirus. Otherwise, it's going to take two years to compile. So let me just do that real quick. There we go. Argo builds. Okay, so this is probably going to take a few minutes um, until it builds. Meanwhile, let's try to figure out how the hell does the whole thing work. So we got the cargo workspace. So it's basically multiple packages, it seems, right? So we got the CLI package, core, tools, hyper, hello, whatever that is, Deno TypeScript, and test plugin. So what I would want to do is I want to create a custom version of Deno that exposes this additional isolate like Deno worker creation, not the web worker, uh, through the JavaScript or TypeScript or whatever. So I guess good start would be to, uh, okay, this is like literally TypeScript itself, I guess. So it bundles the TypeScript. Uh, to tell me, I guess, come on, let me just uh, make this a bit smaller. There we go. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, it runs the TypeScript on a separate isolate. That's some interesting stuff in here. Right, so this is basically the Deno TypeScript is how it compiles things to the TypeScript. We can close this, I guess. Right, so how are we looking? Okay, downloads 2 million crates and compiles them. Hopefully my machine doesn't blow up while doing that. All right, well, let's see what else we got. Uh, core and CLI, I guess core is where all the things are, right? So we got examples. Yes. Okay, so the core is actually pretty lean. I guess it mostly relies on other crates like Rust V8. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> right, so Rust V8 is the bindings for V8 uh, for Rust. Uh, I think they were also basically created and managed by the Deno team. So how do they interface with the JavaScript bits? Okay, so there's our JavaScript. There is the JavaScript bit and okay, there's compilers, tests, okay, ops. What is ops? Is that how they bind the JavaScript to do Rust? Register op, okay. So I wish there was some explanation of how the hell does this thing functions, but I guess we have to figure it out ourselves because the documentation for Deno right now is not exactly in a top-notch state which you know is expected because it's not even version 1.0 yet. Okay, so this is, okay, so you define a Rust function that does something like op make dear, right? And then you got this init function that registers op that calls it whatever and then says, okay, there's a core op function that is JSON op, that is a stateful op that is op make dear. There's a lot of bindings. I wish I understood how any of that works, but we're, we're gonna try to figure it out. Um, FS might be a nice place to stay, uh, like to look at it because it has to interact with a lot of you know, file system and a lot of Rust code essentially. Uh, we got a web worker as well. So I guess we could extend web worker and add our own custom thing here, which uh, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. We, oh, wait a second, it, it has those. All right, so is it just not, is it just not documented? So we got those create worker. All right, interesting. Ah, da, 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 let me see. So I remember Deno had the, um, da, 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 da. okay, we don't need that yet. So maybe it is exposed, it's just not documented, which, you know, might as well be the case. We got API reference. Does this have function? So this is, seems like this is just the Deno workspace, right? And uh, so this was from worker host, whatever that is. 
uh, is not here. Okay, so let me just go here, main, right, deploy and see. So then no. Okay, we don't have that worker, worker close, my worker, main bootstrap, okay. How do I access this worker host? Okay, so this is the, here we have our make deer and so on and so forth, right? Uh, make deer open. Is it just like not document, like it's not in the definitions, but it's still there? Is that what happens? Okay, uh, so I'm gonna collapse this for now. I'm gonna create new test TS file. And uh, okay, we don't care about this for now. What I'm gonna do is, so we got this create worker thing, which is worker host. I assume there's gonna be a JavaScript file called worker host as well, right? No, there's not. Maybe that's the problem. Interesting, okay, so we got this. Uh, let's, you know what, let's try to find where is it actually used. So workers. Dispatch op create worker. Okay, so the the web workers use this underneath to actually create a worker that is then where this is where so this is basically environment for web workers. Okay. Source code specifier has source code name. Okay. Now I wish there was a bit more docs for that, but let's try this. Okay, so we got this. Okay, so this is our op, right? Create JSON op. Okay, state args data. Right, so what is this? Let's see what this actually does. So we got, okay, so we decompose this stuff. Uh, to do isn't this wrong. <laughs> that is an interesting comment, but okay. So resolve URL or path specif. So the specifier can be also a URL. And um, where was the, so in this case, in this case, the specifier is a string, right? But we can basically pass the URL to our script, which means it's gonna be resolved into a URL. And if there is no source code, basically gonna try to resolve the specifier as import and execute that. Okay, thread save state, create a channel, new worker for, okay, so this specifically creates workers. It looks very close to what we want, but not quite. Well, that's a bit unfortunate. I wish there would be just like a proper isolate, but I guess, yeah. So it looks like we will have to create our own module, I guess here. Okay, so yeah, I guess we could just go for the web workers and take the workers TS and just create a new package. Uh, meanwhile, something failed here. Uh, error initializing completion directory. A lot of permission denied, failed to run Rust TV 8. Why is permission denied? No, what? Uh, then, uh, okay, commented not blah, 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 blah. registry, Rust backtrace. Per why is permission denied? Incremental compilation as a directory, permission denied, OS error 13. What is OS error 13? Is it VSL acting up? Do I have to? take my MacBook out for this. Uh, what does it mean? Trace back, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I mean, that should be owned by just created this folder. Like, what are you talking about? What was the dear again? BXJS, deno pass, deno target debug. Yeah, so this, this, this is created by me. What are you talking about? Right, let's try running the cargo build again. Uh, okay, there's some Failed to run command error incremental permission denied. Okay, so it's still okay. Let's try. So target. What was the folder again? Debug build. Rusty v8. So the v8 build for some reason fails on v. That oh man, that might be a problem. Right. So the v8 build might not actually work uh on vsl because of some limitations the vsl has basically which is a pain in ass might be better to compile this on the windows side of things but oh man okay rusty v8 uh let me see rusty v8 vsl1 
Uh, rise TV8, yeah, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing they probably don't even support that, right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, it's not like a lot of people are using VSL1 for things like this, but I mean, theoretically it should work, right? Like Rust is pretty flexible. Do, do, do. Let me think for a second. Uh, yeah, so the VSL2 would probably work just fine because it's like a full on Linux kernel, but VSL1, okay, the um, DuckDuckGo doesn't really do a pretty good job on searching for stuff like this. Mini V8. Mm. So what if I do this? Rest V8 VSL. No, doesn't seem like anyone had any problems with that. I wonder if I'm just missing some packages or something. Cannot run PKG, do not exist. Hey, exit code 101, uh, Chromium Clang. I don't have build essentials, right? Sudo apt install builds. I got that, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, V8 compiling requirements. I'm feeling like I'm just missing some libraries or something. V8 on macOS. I mean, macOS is good enough if you tell me what I need to compile it, what is going on. Okay, this thing doesn't load. Um, to do, do, maybe wait a second. Rusty, uh, whoops. Rusty V8. Is there like a requirements list or something? V8, C API, blah, blah, blah. Build, cargo build, VV, do not open. Depends on Python 2.7, not Python 3. Do I have Python 2.7? Minus version, what I have here, 2.7. Okay, so that should be fine. Uh, depends on glib 2.0. Okay, there we go. Maybe this is what we want. I probably should have read the docs first. Um, okay. All right, so we're definitely missing some libs here. Uh, the build depends on several tools. Uh, GN, Ninja, Clang. LLVM C lang. Okay, uh, let's. I mean, I guess we should. But I mean, they should be included in the build essentials, I think. So let's try cargo build again. This. Right, there we go. So it seems like we were just missing some libraries for this thing to compile. It's probably. I wonder how long it takes to compile. What was it? 600,000 lines of code? Yeah, that's. Oh boy, okay. Do not rely on binary. Okay, yeah. So let's let's actually see how long will it take. All right. So uh, seems like it's building for now. Uh, meanwhile, let us continue diving into the source code. Okay. So what we want to do is we want first to create another another Rust file, right? That would do that. I wonder where where do they actually hook it up. Where is um, web worker mod? Okay, so there we go. There's our mod web worker and use create, create web worker, web worker. Okay, and then it should probably use worker post message or something somewhere, right? No, it actually doesn't. Interesting. How the hell does it work? Or op? Or is it, or is it op? Right. So this is purely used within the setup files. How do they attach to the rest of the? How does this works with the rest of the thing? There's our worker. There's our web worker. There's the state. Whatever that does. Right, save state. Okay, this is just the state definition for the Deno engine itself, it seems. Mod RS. Okay, this is, it just publishes all of those mods. And then this is, okay, we got the worker. Right, so let's try to investigate this, I guess. So we got the worker and how does this main worker, so we, does it export main worker? Seems to only have ops, right? So how does this? How does this attaches to everything else? Uh, seems like crate worker. This is probably external, right? This can be the same crate that they have. Use mod web worker. Okay, create worker in state. Den of flags. Okay, so this this is actually the function that we want to have access to, right? 
And it's exactly what we want to do. We want to create this Deno worker, which is the uh, has the main worker and thread save global state. And then we want to pass the whatever the code user gives into this thing. I'm trying to figure out how the hell do you actually do that? Uh, okay, so let new worker. Yeah, so basically, this is what we want to expose as the JavaScript API. How the shit do you do that? Oh boy, it feels like I need to probably learn Rust first to, to actually figure out. Okay, so we got JavaScript. Uh, clean snapshot, compile snapshots. So this is something to do with the snapshots. This is not what we want. Okay, FS. So if I could only figure out how the hell does the setup works for the existing uh, Rust functions and JavaScript definitions, that will be well. I think it will be like a mac maximum goal for today because uh, I feel like it's gonna take like a half an hour more. Okay, file open. Okay, right, so this is, yeah, maybe we could go for like the lighter version. So we got the EFS thing, right? And EFS, so it defines this op function that is then register. So what is this register op? Where does this come from? I is isolate. And there's a register op function that registers op within isolate. Where is it defined? Runtime isolate, okay. Is that V8 thing? That doesn't sound like a V8 thing because I never heard that uh, terminology before. Maybe it is V8 thing. Context register op, okay. So is it literally all I have to do is, is that, um, let's see, V8 register op. Okay, then I'll isolate register op. Okay, so there's actually Rust docs for that. Okay, that's already a better thing. So we got deno isolate and we got register op. Defines how deno core dispatch acts. Called whenever deno core dispatch is called in JavaScript. Zero copy buff corresponds to the second argument of... Okay, so this is the deno part. And whenever you register something, it basically will respond to a dispatch from deno core. And this is, I guess, how it interrupts within, uh, so basically with the um, Rust part, right? All right, so this slowly starts to make sense. So let's, uh, first of all, did it finish build? No, it, I guess building V8 is gonna take some time, but uh, let's see. So we got uh, all of that stuff. I guess we could just, uh, so basically this means we could first define the op, right? So we can create new file, call it, um, I don't know, what do we call it? We call it the deno worker, I guess. Deno worker RS, right? And we could, so we don't need lib for now. We, yeah, we basically want something like web worker fs. So we can copy that. We probably don't need all of this stuff. We just need one one thing which is let's call it op op deno worker create right so this is what we want and it's gonna be deno worker creates a stateful op deno worker create okay now, do we need any, okay, so this is the state from where? Oh God, okay. It's gonna take some time to figure out how the hell does this API work. <laughs> uh, JSON, okay, so we could, <laughs> then a worker, create, so this is debug message. Feel like, you know what, let's just kill all of that and just do this, right? Maybe buff, where does the, this doesn't come from anywhere, so... Hello, let's just start with simple hello world and see if we can actually execute that. <laughs> all right, so we defined this deno workers. Uh, now we need to import it somewhere. Um, this does, okay, so we probably don't need half of this imports here, but that's fine. I probably should also install some Rust plugins because this is not gonna fly well. Now where was, so this is the test, where was the ops imported? Uh, so we got this thing. 
Piano core. No, this is like. Okay, so this is like no, this is not ops. This is just FS. Is it in the lib? LibRS. I guess it's probably yeah. There we go. Okay, so we are using mods FS. Okay, cool. So we can actually just probably. And I I wonder is there like a mapping somewhere defined? Okay, we're gonna open this cargo. Da -da 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 -da. So we got this. We got that. Okay, this external stuff. Then a core path. Okay, this yeah, okay, so I guess first of all, let's let's I can I kinda wanna wait first until it compiles so it actually doesn't fail with me modifying the core source code. But on the other hand, this V8 build will take I don't know, how long will it take? It's probably like is there I wonder how my CPU looks right now. Is it on fire or not? Uh, uh, oh yeah, it's definitely on fire. Come on. <laughs> oh my god. Yep, that is working really hard. Um, overall logical, yeah, there we go. All eight, all eight cores, eight logical cores loaded to hundred percent at three point six gigahertz. That is, that is some hardcore compilation going on. All right. Um, I wonder if if there's actually. Uh, let me think. Deno. Custom op tutorial. Is there a tutorial about like customizing Deno? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let me just Google that, I guess. Allow changes to ops. Oh, it seems like the um, GitHub and the issues is currently like the best uh, source of the documentation for the Deno so far, but uh, let's see. So, okay, so there's actually a original issue from uh, Ryan himself. Because Ops RS has grown over to a thousand lines, needs to be broken up. Uh, we heard Ops like read, write, blah, blah, blah. Okay, breaking up Ops into CLI and... Okay, so this, they already did that. So we now have one file per one op, which is already a thing. Create op dispatcher traits. Okay, add new integer. Then a core dispatch. Isolate register op operate. Okay, so this is already all, we already figured that out basically, and this is already the changes that they have executed. Necessary features for one O and they mentioned something there. Consider this closed in 39 isolate register op in CLI take two. Is there, wait, is this a way like to give, to provide plugin ops or something? Because that would be a lot easier than recompiling the whole damn thing, right? Uh, use isolate in CLI. Okay, so how does this work? Uh, dispatcher, dispatch, there's no blah, blah, blah. Uh, dispatch minimal. Okay, uh, mod RS. That was a damn large file. Okay, you know what? That doesn't look like what we want. So let's see. The <laughs> My computer is super slow right now. <laughs> I'm hoping the video quality is actually fine. Let me check what the Twitch says. Uh, yeah, the bitrate is a bit all over the place, but you know what, bear with me. Uh, there's nothing really meaningful happening right now. <laughs> uh, okay, it takes ages. Okay, so uh, Rusty V8, Deno debug, loading execution of modules needs to be corrected, import maps, dynamic import. GTS file support bundle compile is not going to be for 1.0 install uh, DL open plugins extensions modules. Okay, this is this sounds like what we want. We need low level primitives to build on that as we need to make a kind of abstraction is working on loading ops in DLLs. So they are basically planning to allow third party plugin ops, which would be a perfect option for building the platform as a service based on Deno in this case, because the custom op is exactly what we want. Native plugins, uh, CDN one for VIP usage. And was it, so this is, uh, it was closed. But why was it closed? Was it actually shipped anywhere? It okay, it was shipped. Now it was merged in this, and then there's the uh, plugin example. 
So I guess this would be like, again, you know, this is a lot better because I don't have to recompile the whole damn V8, which is still running for we started it when, uh, yeah, 15 minutes ago, it's still, still in progress. God damn it. That thing is large. All right, native plugins. Uh, so use Deno Core, Deno Op, blah, 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 Deno Crate, some op and plugin, Deno Open plugin. So wait, you would just basically write this in Rust, then compile it into SO file and then just open it as a plugin from Deno from JavaScript side, if I understand this correctly? Is, this, is that how it works? Because if that's how it works, this is freaking amazing. Okay, uh, yeah, so this is exactly the same thing. Cargo lib building, what is this? Cargo binding lib, uh, cargo mode build join. Wait, are they, they are planning to allow using cargo from JavaScript, which is kind of bonkers, but it's kind of awesome as well. <laughs> okay, but this actually looks like a lot better than what I wanna do. Uh, okay, and it failed, of course it freaking failed. Why it failed, I have no idea. Is it because, oh, because it wants me to probably check out the TypeScript because it's a dependency, okay. You know what? That's yeah. So that took a lot of time to um, to un unravel, I guess. But let's try using let's try using the plugins. Like there's no literally no docs for them. <laughs> but um, right. So let me let me kill the Deno. That took a lot of time to build that. But uh, I'm just gonna kill that because I like wasting my time on on uh, random things. And we're gonna try to build the plugin. Then no, so yes, let's call it pass plugin, right? Um, I guess deno pass plugin because that makes more sense. Uh, oh, I guess we should do that. Uh, kill that cargo new deno pass plugin, right? Because we want this to be a Rust project. There we go. Okay. So we got ourselves a new Rust project and let us just uh, copy the whole thing. I think we would need to basically include Deno as the dependency. And to do that, we have to, uh, wait a second, I need, I probably need, so okay, I can kill that because we don't need that anymore. I can kill that, I can kill that, kill that. Okay, cargo rust tutorial, uh, where was the first steps? There we go. Right, so we created that dependencies, blah, blah, blah. Cargo builds, uh, please, Tell me the cargo guides, creating, working existing dependencies. There we go. This is what we want. Okay, so we need uh, what was the register crates IO? There we go. And we want a deno thing. And it is zero. Okay, so it's the same version as the version of deno. We okay, kill that. I don't need that. We got this main RS and this op does what? Hello from eighty data zero copy. Okay. Mm hmm. Right, so cargo builds. So it should theoretically pull the deno from the crates and then hopefully build it correctly. Uh, what font is this? Uh, which font? So the VS code is, I'm using the default one that comes with the theme and theme is a dark, one dark pro. I don't know if it changes the font or not. I think it's default one. And the one in the terminal is hell if I remember that. So let me just open the settings. Uh, I think it was the default one, but I don't remember to be honest. So this is the profile. The profile is this one. And yes, it's consolas. So it's, I think it's also default one from the, um, from the Windows terminal. Hey, Matrix, welcome to the stream. Uh, greetings from Netherlands. Ah, nice. <laughs> I still haven't been to Netherlands, man. Should probably visit at some point. VS code looks slightly different. Uh, I think it's the same It's probably just because it's zoomed because I've increased the zoom quite a bit to make it, you know, like nicer for the viewers, <laughs> but it's the default font. So I don't know if, uh, I, th I don't think the one dark pro actually changes the font. Right, there you go, uh, come on. Yeah, I think the zoom changes the aliasing quant quite a bit. So it, it just looks slightly different, but if you zoom out, it's gonna be very familiar. All right, come on now. Man, that is a lot of dependencies. Well, the cool thing is that we don't have to build the Rusty V8 because it's already pre-built, which is 
which is great for us. Oh no, it's built it anyway. No. Oh god. Okay. Um, I hope it's cached. Well, that's probably gonna take another fifteen minutes, maybe or maybe not. I don't. Like oh boy. Okay. At the moments like this, I really start to appreciate the JavaScript ecosystem and the fact that you don't have to rebuild the V8 every time you run something. Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> it started, oh, damn it. Okay, um, so let's try to see what we actually have here. Right, so we got some op, uh, how do we actually do that? Okay, so let's, let's, let's check the other side of it, right? So we got this thing which means that we can to do this. So there's gonna be target It's probably gonna create that in target, which means that we can create uh, some op TS over here. Oh boy, it is so freaking slow. Okay, um, so this is gonna be deno. Let me, let me just do that. Uh, deno pass plugin target. Yeah, it's probably gonna be something like this some op and then we're gonna dispatch that yeah so this this looks fine but oh boy <laughs> it's gonna take some time should definitely visit there are lots of really cool stuff to try oh man i like i've there's so many cool places in amsterdam that i want to visit but i like i've been we've been planning to visit it for the past two years or something and still can find the time to do that which is annoying as hell you should probably just book vacation for something like april or may and just go there Ah, okay. All right. Um, you now the question is: how, So last time it failed after, er, uh, after I don't know what was it. It took fifty. Yeah, so it took fifteen minutes to build it last time. I don't know if it will be the same this time or if it has cached something. How long have you been using Rust? Where did you learn it from? Uh, I mean, I've been using Rust for the past two hours. <laughs> Before that, I did a very short stream showing off how to build a Rust-based uh, extension for Node.js, which was like, again, about two hours of experience. So I didn't really use it beyond that. So it's like, you know, cumulative experience of four hours of Rust. I use the official docs for that, and that's about it. It seems like a very nice language. I mean, it's very uh, straightforward for the most part. Like, you know, if you don't touch anything crazy, like I know that it has some insane st stuff related to DSLs and things like this, but I never dived into that. So my my fiddling with it is limited to very uh, straightforward things. But yeah, and uh, I think official docs are really good. So I did not, I, I didn't have a need to look beyond that basically. Right, so what do we do for the 15 minutes while it actually builds that? Probably a good idea to check if I have any Rust packages here. I think I had some, but I don't remember if I have them. Yeah, there we go, there's a Rust. Installing VSL Ubuntu, yes, please. I want my Rust extensions. Um, this is, what is this, IntelliCode? Oh, why don't I have this? Uh, I have it disabled. Why is this? No, it is enabled, right? Seems to be shown as disabled, but what, what is going on? VSL Ubuntu uh, extension is enabled. Okay, why is it gray? That is, I guess it's just a glitch in VSL itself. Uh, it's also enabled. It's a bit, okay, I think this is just a bug. Where's my Rust thing? Did you, installing, okay. Maybe it was a bad idea to install something and build V8 at the same time. <laughs> oh my God, my poor CPU. Well, on the other hand, you know what? This is my gaming rig, so I'm not really using CPU that much for the most part. So it's about time to make it work. <laughs> okay, I wonder if there's any other docs in here. Let's have a look. Uh, so we got is 400 lines. I mean, I gotta give them credit. The deno is surprisingly lean when you look at the deno itself you know without diving into the third party dependencies that are also maintained by them obviously but the core is super easy to understand and okay you know if you know at least some rust it's quite easy to figure out what's going on and the fact that they've added native plugin support that you can invoke from javascript is uh pretty damn cool so we're gonna see if we can actually pull that today I'm still a bit concerned that the V8 won't actually compile properly because I'm running in VSL and there's like a whole bunch of limitations here. Uh, but 
if we could do that uh so yeah okay we got this register okay so you essentially register op immediately and then you define this public function op this is this is typescript right so the typescript side yeah and then you can just call that right uh here's the question do they have any tests or anything like that where i would see a bit more of that so i got the lock we got the cargo tomol so this adds the plugin was there a test plugin I guess, uh, okay, it is in master, so it should be, I guess I just missed it somehow. There are no errors, okay, so this seems to be the bootstrapping code, there's the flags, dispatch, uh, runtime, permissions, plugins. Okay, so there's the plugins interface, and sync, do, 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 do. okay, plugin op, plugin op implementation, okay, so this is the JavaScript side of it test utils we got tests for the plugins do they have their own permissions no doesn't seem so okay da, da, da. okay mods permissions plugin or okay so this is the plugin side rust side of the plugins clone really okay so there's the they basically have the separate op for the plugins themselves that interacts okay so i guess it's just yeah it's just a sugar code for what i wanted to do myself which makes it 20 times easier, which is kind of great. Uh, maybe worker. Okay, so this is some worker bootstrapping. Wonder if we can access the workers like this. Okay, state worker, is there, come on, ah, there we go, there's test plugin. Okay, so this is the test plugin itself. Test sync, test async. Okay, so it allows you to do sync and async work, which is great. I guess if we do the sync work, it would return the result immediately as we invoke the function. Otherwise, it would be a callback or whatever. Or I guess, wait a second. This deno is promises by default, so it's going to be a promise, right? Uh, okay, this is the integration tests. Um, this is the test JS. So if we got the windows, then we use the DLLs. If we got the mark, then we use dylib. Uh, that's a bit annoying that you have to do that, but it's fine. In our case, basically, I would want to the deno based platform as a service to be deployed within the docker container which means we can just say okay we're just going the linux way and just doing dot so uh deno args uh okay sync sync so if we do test sync it will get response immediately if we do a sync then the response uh not expected not response so how they test the sync Set a sync handler. Okay, uh, so you have to specifically add a sync handler to this. Uh, which which version? Okay, so this is reload required. Let's reload that. Hey Carlos, yes, I am still on. I am still trying to compile the V8 in Rust. It takes about 15 minutes. Last time it failed after that, but hopefully this time around it will work properly. Was it lunch? Oh man, I need to eat something. I forgot about lunch. I'm really bad at this stuff. Uh, right, this is probably a good idea to go eat something as well. <laughs> All right, uh, so we got what? We got sync. Okay, so we are returning immediately, which means yeah, the, yeah. All right, so we got the response. Uh, right, so we can return that. RSL is not installed. Yes, install. Why not? Uh, probably again a bad idea to do that along with uh, compilation of the whole damn V8. But let's see how that develops. Anyway, let's go back to the reading the code. So we don't care about the sync operation for now. Seems like the test basically just runs it and assumes the STD out. Yeah, okay, so it's just a very straightforward integration test. Nothing super fancy here. Uh, okay. Right. Um, UVS for fast. Okay, so this is, I guess. Oh, yeah, all right. So they created the plugins because someone was like, hey, let's do the uh uvs as the websocket alternative and they're like we don't want that in the core but you can do a plugin with it which makes perfect sense and also my browser stopped freaking working because of all the compilation going in the background <laughs> okay how's my poor cpu doing let's have a look at that um I, oh god even the task manager is, is doing poorly yep Yep, still at 100%. Yep. All right, you know what? That's fine. 
Okay, uh, major feature. Okay, this is V1 again. So we got the plugins. Yeah, I already looked at that. Uh, signal handlers, FS events, TS and source maps. It actually looks like V1 is really, really close. So we got the some cleanup left and some import meta. Doesn't work with bundling on browsers. Makes. Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, so we got, you know what? We also want to have a look at this deno crate. Uh, is there, there should be, wait a second. This, I think it's just, yeah. We want docs RS. Uh, the, so my my uh, my whole idea for the stream, and for, I guess there's going to be a few more streams on that, is to build, um, I guess, ExoFrame version based on Deno, but just for the JavaScript, because one of the core pain points when you're working with ExoFrame is that, well, it's based on Docker, so there's a lot of overhead, because if you like do Node.js or any JavaScript engine, basically, you are running new instance every time, right? And that is done because you have to work with package JSON, which means installing packages and it's annoying and there's like a lot of pain in ass involved. With Deno, you don't need to care about that because it resolves and fetches the modules for you automatically, right? So my idea was to um, create a platform as a service based on Deno that essentially uses one Deno binary, so it runs one time, and then once it runs, it creates the new isolates or rather the workers as the Deno calls them. Uh, okay, so this is installed, could not find cargo toml, that is fine, cargo must be in the root of the workspace. Um, I mean, yeah, whatever, we, we're, we're okay for now, just, just die. Yeah, so basically the idea was to create, uh, so what Deno does when it runs um, any script, it creates the new Where's the code? We just looked at that, but let me just revisit that. Uh, wait a second, I think it was in the core? No, it wasn't in the CLI. So it creates the new V8 isolate with a specific Deno environment. And this was like when I was trying to create something similar with ExoFrame and Node.js, I uh, basically, I, I was talking about in the beginning, but just, you know, just to reiterate, basically, Whenever Java, whenever Node sets up the whole like module resolution and everything, there is a ton of work happening in the background. So it's not just like set up and isolate and quickly do the bootstrapping of the environment and you're done, right? With Deno, it is literally that simple. So there's this uh, run script thing. And basically what it does is this creates this worker with specific flags, which is again, permissions and file system access and whatever right? And then just calls this bootstrap main runtime, and then you're ready to work, right? So you just start it as a Tokyo, um, like with a Tokyo threads, or you can either start it on the current one or start a new one. And then you can execute anything you want within this worker, right? So my idea is to take this worker, uh, create a basic Deno web server, which would basically work the same way that XFrame works, you would have a CLI, where you log into the server and then you say hey, whatever deno frame deploy, right? The server would then receive the code that user pushes, create this new worker, which is not the web worker, but the deno worker actually, right? Set up the environment, connect it to the Tokyo, and then execute the specific code that user sent, which means that the deno after that will handle all the module resolution, bundling, whatever, TypeScript compilation, and all of that would be like a few hundred lines basically because Deno does all the heavy lifting, which is why I essentially started working on this idea because I think it's gonna be relatively easy to do. It actually built, it actually finished the V8, holy shit. Uh, so it builds a box containing all your code and dependencies. Um, not, so basically the thing is that you can do exactly the same right now by, um, so if we go into the project VXJS Deno, so we got this um, da, 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 server, right? So we got the server TS, right? And if I do Deno server TS, it will run and start a server. Okay, obviously if I pass it correct flags. Now the thing is that the server uses remote modules, right? So this is, it, it imports it from the URL. And the problem with Node problem with doing something like this in Node.js was that you have the package JSON where you have to run npm install so that npm drags the modules locally. And then there's the whole like require resolution that looks for the modules on the specific folders. 
And all of that is really complex, right? And you have to actually do it basically manually. So this is done all manually within in a node backend, right? Now with Deno, it's literally just one URL and Deno fetches that for you and compiles it into one nice in-memory thing for you. So you don't have to think about that. So what I wanna do is I wanna allow doing that, but instead of running a Deno server every time and spawning another Deno instance, it will be done within one specific Deno worker. At least it's my assumption that it, this would work as well as running a new instance of, De of Deno, but would have less overhead because it's just another isolate essentially, right? Uh, if I remember correctly, this create worker state flags is saying blah, 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 progress, thread safe. So it's set up the environment and everything. And then there's the worker and main worker is uh, it's not from here, create worker, main worker. So I think this is basically uh, that, what, what is that? No, DuckDuckGo, this is not what I'm searching for. Um, -da -da -da. Let me see, where is this? So this is, this is probably the eight worker crates. There we go. Um, repository, there's no repository. Um, okay, I'm not sure if that's the right crate. But anyway, so the thing is that basically it would result in smaller overheads than, you know, running the Deno process every time. I, again, this is something I want to test. I'm not 100% sure. God damn it, it failed. Uh, okay, let's see. All right, okay, so it's failed because core op is not in the root. Interesting. Okay, so they didn't publish it yet is that the case did my all my idea just flop because they didn't publish the um the version of it okay let's see cargo tomal uh do we have a version somewhere release okay so let's see we got releases uh plugins plugin ops should change native plugins okay dl open okay so 33 um no, that's release issues. There we go. And then we got issue 3372. So theoretically, it should. Why is it failing? So it says it doesn't have things that basically should be in there, which is weird as hell. Uh, warning and used macro. That is fine. Uh, Deno. Okay. Main not found. That is also fine. Considering main function. Why does it fail to find? those things we we have added deno right so we got cargo we got the deno uh doo -doo 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 -doo. we got the cargo lock that is also fine we got yeah so this theoretically should work just fine let me see so if i run build again just to be sure please tell me it's not going to combine yeah okay so no longer compiling the v8 again which is a great thing okay so build the deno and then it just says, hey, your deno does not have what it should have, which is, um, let me see. So cargo, uh, rust crates, uh, what was it? It was a website with documentation. There we go, docsrs, and we want deno. Yes, we want that. Deno CLI crate. Wait, am, I, am I importing from the wrong one? Is that like deno core or something? Oh, okay. Am I using the wrong one? So maybe this is what I want. So we, we are trying to import what? Core, op, core, buff, pin buff, plugin, in init context. Um, wait a second. So let's check what does this, uh, what does the file changes actually use here? So we got this, we got, where's the cargo tumble, deno path. Yeah, okay. So I'm <laughs> using the wrong one. God damn it. Okay, so we want instead of Deno, we want Deno, uh, how's it called? Deno underscore core. There we go. And now it will turn out that we don't need, uh, we don't need V8 to build the whole damn thing. And I was waiting for 15 minutes for nothing. Okay, let me see the chat. I was reading about the workers on the node to allow multi-threaded. Uh, yeah, so the workers, they're kind of similar. So the workers in Node.js also work on top of isolates. Deno also has workers, but uh, 
Okay, so wait a second, it fails. Okay, so let me just finish the, my thought. So Deno also has workers that work in the same way that the workers do in Node.js and in browsers. But if, in this case, which I just tried in the beginning of a stream to use a worker, but the thing is that basically it doesn't have any Deno environment. It's just an isolate that runs within the uh, V8 engine, right? Which means that there is no module resolution. There is no like TypeScript compile. Oh, okay, I guess there is, but it's like very limited, right? So you cannot actually do like file access. You cannot do, um, I don't know, whatever the hell you want, basically. No, wait, I'm lying. You can do file access, but you cannot, for example, start a separate server from within the worker, which I guess it's a limitation of Deno for now. Like you could do that within the Node.js, but anyway, it doesn't give you as much control as you would have over a separate, like proper full on Deno worker. That's the point because it's not enough to just start a separate worker and tell it, you know, hey, just run another server. We actually want to have control over it. We want to have logs access. We want to have the monitoring. We want to have ability to terminate it and so on and so forth. And uh, workers don't really provide all that. Okay, so we got Deno Core. I guess we have to do um, Deno Core, right? I guess this would allow it to build. Uh, Deno Core buff, pin buff. Uh, okay, do we need Deno as well? Is that the case? Whoops. So I guess we need both then, and then Deno. Do you want that? Do we know what Leap Deno uses to transpile? It's literally just TypeScript itself. So it's like one of the, if you clone the repo, there would be like one of the folders would have the whole TypeScript as a sub repo. So no pinned buff in the root. Futures, okay, so we need the futures package, which I somehow missed, uh, future 0 0.3. So Deno is Deno core and Deno cle. Okay, so it actually should be Deno core here as well. And I need to, so I guess I don't need Deno, but I do need futures. Uh, do, 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 Deno, yeah, okay, so we don't need Deno cle at all. So this should, oh man. I waited for so long and all for nothing, basically. Uh, okay, we import futures, but we don't use them. We import buff, but don't use it. That's fine. Uh, consider adding main. Okay, so this, uh, why is it failing? Fn init pub op sync. I guess I am building it in a wrong way, maybe. Publish false name test plugin version author lib crate type. Okay, I guess maybe I need to do that. So we don't care about this. Is that what you want? Uh, can I find library blah, rename? Oh, okay. So basically this, there's a naming conventions within Rust that should be followed if you're building a library or not a library. All right, uh, trade bound box convert is not satisfied. Okay, so there's some conversion issues. I guess we could take the code that we have over here, right? So that should work perfectly fine, I think. So opt test sync, copy that, close this, sum op uh, libr s, sum op. So just gonna copy this stuff. Is it the same signature pin buff? Yeah, yeah that looks fine. So just gonna do this. Right, okay, so we just, yeah, so we, there was another casting that was missing. And are we building now? Okay, it actually built, cool. And now we have targets, uh, debug, lib deno pass plugin so cool. So it actually did build. And now we should be able to say, blah, blah, blah. So targets, debug, lib deno so, okay. Sum up, do sum up. And uh, I guess we need to say export default do do some op there's a very good naming over here then we got tests we import do some op from yep yeah. uh, no wait what was it some op and then we just do do some up so in theory that should run our native plugin right epic naming yeah i mean that's just copy pasted code from the example so don't don't blame me for that okay uh we need to run deno uh test 
Cannot resolve module sum up. All oh, right, I forgot to add the. Oh, man, I. That's probably gonna take me a long time, but I am so used to not writing extensions that. Uh, okay. Boom, boom, boom. Um, cannot find uint8 array. Did you mean uint8? Okay, it's, it's wrongly capitalized. So let's copy that and uh, paste this here. There we go. Okay, you're working now. Permission denied. Okay. Oh, so there's a separate flag that allows plugins. Interesting. That's another layer of security. And we go. Oh, right. <laughs> I probably should console log this. Actually, it seems to work. It does work. Holy crap. Okay. That is kind of amazing. Whoops. So you are loving the Rust compiler. I mean, Rust, Rust is pretty damn great. Like all things considered, even though I don't understand some of the, you know, syntax that it has because it's like second time seeing it, the errors it has is just spot on. Like you immediately know what's wrong. It's not the obscure, like undefined is not a function. <laughs> so, you know, all the props to the, um, to the people who built that. Right, okay, so I guess this would be a good spot to stop it. We basically created a custom plugin for Deno. I feel like I would need to th think about that for a few more days to figure out how exactly we sh could do that and to see what actually Deno Core exposes so that we could, you know, create a custom isolate and everything. Uh, I guess I'm going to kill the server here, kill the main and kill the deploy. And then I'm going to do git. So I already created the git here. So I'm going to echo um, target into git ignore. Um, so git adds. So what do we have? Yeah, that looks perfect. Okay. Um, create a simple deno rust plugin. Okay. Maybe I should also add a make file as usual. Uh, let me sign the commit. So yeah, make file would probably go a long way. Make file. So build is gonna be. Uh, so I get. I'm basically gonna be wrapping up the stream in the next few minutes. If you guys have any questions or suggestions or thoughts about my crazy idea of building a platform as a service based on Deno, throw them into the chat. Um, yeah. Okay. Let me just. Uh, so building, we go into CD uh, Deno pass plugin and run cargo built, right? Then uh, run is going to be deno allow plugin and we're going to run test TS. Yeah, no, I said test TS. There we go. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, make builds just to make sure it works. Make test. Uh, no, make run. Yep, that works. Cool. Okay, so we got this and I guess we also need some readme file describing what the hell did we actually do this. Readme MD. I'm going to be lazy again as usual and copy that from uh, GitHub building X with JS from one of the older repos. I think it still has potential like the fact that there is there are native plugins out of the box is freaking amazing. Like I remember trying to do something similar with Node.js and at one point, I basically figured out that I would need to uh, recompile the whole node, essentially fork it and do my own version of it, which was not exactly perfect. Right. Okay. So we got the native plugin. I guess that's. Um, we're going to continue the work on this. So I'm just going to call it Deno based pass project. And it's gonna be um, um, an attempt to create a deno based pass that uses isolates to deploy things is basically all I wanna have. Um, da -da 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 -da. We don't care about this for now. Related links is gonna be deno and I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to link the Deno native plugins. Um, to Deno native plugins. Um, PR over here just for the sake of it. It's going to be under MIT license. I would love to see your thought process about this project diagram. 
I'm too lazy to do diagrams, bullet points. I mean, okay, bullet points maybe, but I'm usually too lazy to do like diagrams and stuff. I do have it in my head and it's like, probably if there would be like a very convenient tool to instantly transfer it from my head to, um, you know, something I would do that, but um, bullet points, yeah, we could do that, I guess. Uh, I mean, we could do that now, project plans, planks, yes. So use Deno to deploy third party, the party code as, uh, yes, laziness, absolutely. And also the fact that, you know, you, you kind of, you already have it in your head. And in this case, I don't really have to uh, collaborate with anyone. So there is no like immediate benefit of writing this all down. And while I'm doing the streams videos, I can just talk through that. But yeah, I mean, just like, okay, so let's just, okay, so the, Project plans, use Deno as a third part to deploy third party code as um, within, let's call it within isolates, not separate processes, right? So this is one. Um, I mean, I guess this is basically the whole description of it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So use Deno, not separate processes. Uh, let me just, I guess, project, let's call it project description. So basically the, uh, let me just, the idea is to use Dino to deploy third party code within uh, running within one Dino instance. Let's put it this way. Um, the aim is to rely on using V8 isolates with bootstrapped Deno environment in, in V, how do you spell this word? environment? Yes. Rather than, uh, okay, you know what? I probably don't need this site now and I probably need to enable word wrap because this is gonna be a lot easier. There we go, okay rather than relying on separate, uh, or I guess I already used the rather than running the uh, separate processes, right? So we got that part. Um, mm -hmm. So approaches, let's just do this. Approaches we tried. Uh, I guess uh, approaches that fail, let's call it this way. One dynamic. Dynamic import. So we tried at the very beginning of the video to do this via dynamic import. It actually works. Uh, it worked, but runs on the same uh, um, on the same environment. I, I guess maybe I just uh, do it like this. Worked, but it runs on the same environment, and means shares global scope and cannot be controlled. Controlled by parent, right? So this is the downside. Then uh, worker. Uh, did work. And then basically no, okay, so again, the, the problem is that I guess we could have made it work probably, but it could not be controlled by parents. So that was the problem. And we could leave it below. We could basically sort of document what's current approach. Use native plugin for Deno that will bleh, expose Deno worker. Um, I probably should link that. Uh, let me see Deno, 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 Deno lens. Yeah, then we can just go here. Uh, it was in the CLI, we want the lib, come on. So essentially we wanna mimic the run command, run scripts, there we go. Uh, well, no, not here, over here. Then a worker, I guess it's just this, then a worker, worker in the similar manner to how Deno runs scripts. Right, so we built the plugin. 
And I guess we would basically continue off from here. I think that's a bit more description, should be a bit nicer. Get adds, commit, um, add, make file, and basic readme. Done. Okay. So we could, yeah, I guess, uh, where was my EXJ? Uh, yeah, right, okay. I'm, uh, no, goddammit. Build an XWSJS, go over here, create a repo, and I guess we could just wrap it up here for today. I need to sleep on that for a few days. And then I, I think like, I think it's still, it should be possible to do via plugin. Again, I don't want to, uh, you know, recompile the whole demo or even rebuild the whole deno or add something that shouldn't actually be within the deno itself, but should be the plugin. And the fact that they have plugins is really, really cool. So let's see if that, um, if that actually works out. Now, I think that basically if, if I would finish the project, whoa, no, 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 not so many times, there we go. If the project is finished and it actually works, that I would probably migrate all my code to that rather than using Exaframe because 90% of my code that I deployed has to be JavaScript anyway, it's usually simple servers. And as Deno develops further, it's gonna be a lot easier to build stuff on top of it, especially once they've add, they add the, oh boy, what do you call it? The Node.js uh, compatibility layer. All right, um, there we go. There's like a lot of, I mean, the, the project is tiny right now, but we're gonna see how that develops. Yeah, that looks fine. So the description is okay. We could continue doing that. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions, throw them into the chat right now. If not, then um, we can just wrap it up here. As usual, if you missed the stream, you will be able to watch the VOD immediately on Twitch or in a few hours on YouTube. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to reach out to me via Twitter or however. Uh, we also got a Discord server where you can come and talk about this project or anything else JavaScript related. Um, yeah, that's basically it from my side. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. We're gonna continue with this project probably sometime next week. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's see where all of this goes. So. Yeah, guys, enjoy the uh, rest of your day or rest of the week, and I see you on Saturday for the BXJS weekly stream. Bye.